So, yeah, um, getting this started, what is the Biba frequency? How would you describe what exactly all that's about? Yeah, the Biba frequency. Um, I do lots of different things. So I, I pay, I'm an artist, and um, I also do um, spiritual hypnotherapy and just different kind of things like that. And I had to, it's, I don't just want a website to be Biba Logan. It's kind of boring for me. I've had a website mm -hmm. Biba Logan for, for a long time. And for me, I understand frequency. Um, I understand it. I understand what that means. Um, and I understand it through my meditation practice. I, I can see the waves, you know, if, if I close my eyes and I tune into a specific thing, I can see everything as a frequency and I can see if they're like radio waves or something and you can kind of hop on a wave. So if mm. you want to feel, if you want to feel joy, you can just find that frequency and hop onto that frequency. You can see it, you know? Yeah. So with the Biba frequency, I am my own unique frequency. I am my own unique, um, strand of something by my own soul and mm -hmm. the, the biba frequency would describe what i am i mean you're you're your own frequency you're your own sound vibration you're your own energetic field and you're unique to yourself and um that we're now living in 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 a realm where everybody's talking about frequency right I mean, mm -hmm. frequencies, vibrations, energies, and um, and I think we're beginning to understand life in such a more beautiful way. It's more than just a body, or just I'm I'm Biba. Yeah, my name my name is Biba, but I'm not Biba. I'm a frequency. Yeah, and Biba I'm a frequency. is representing that frequency. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And I'm uh -huh. and I am um, pliable to my environment, and I've learned to. Um, tune into my own frequency and really channel myself. Do you understand what I mean when mm -hmm. I say that? Like, there's a lot mm -hmm. of channelers now, but I'm I'm interested in my frequency because the reason why I'm here on the earth is to transmit something, mm. and and we all are. Yeah. Really, we're here to put in some kind of coherence at this time, and um my own frequency and my own soul and my own journey and the evolution of my soul, it kind of sums up what that is. And I'm only really beginning to understand what really is that because it's changing all the time. The idea of it is changing all the time. So the Bieber frequency is just a sum. One plus one equals two. It just sums it up. <laughs> well, I mean, how would you describe what you have been here for? What does this frequency represent? What is it here to create? What are you creating now? And where do you think this is all going? You know, like, uh, what is your dharma here? Where's it all going? I often think about that. And um, I'm, I'm nearly 50, right? So, and the reason why I tell you that is because I've spent a long time thinking about that, maybe 30 years, really intensely, like, mm -hmm. Since I was 21, I really kind of got started going for the self inquiry and, um, and not that age is, is any, has any relevance, but it does to the mind as in time, understanding time. And I believe I've come here to not only to enjoy this experience of being on the earth with the earth, because the earth is a being. Yeah. The earth is, is a being like you and me. And I have a, a deep, deep love um for who that being is i know it well and um i understood it was a being only a few years ago and people talk about i love nature and nature talks to me and i love the ocean and i love the woods and i love the beach but what do they really love about that why do you really love the woods because because the elementals and the nature it can it transmit um really what you are it can clear out if you walk through the woods you're going into that electromagnetic field right so if you're walking down a whole strip of trees and the electromagnetic field is really sharp and it's clear it's tuned into nature the earth's frequency which is you know what's sustaining this whole thing really and well, i go into that after a week let's say online hoxed out on radiation and rolling and you know that 
yeah. that life, right? Yeah, Editing. Dense. Yeah. Dense. Just just like headaches and um indigestion and all of that yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. And then you go into the woods and the electromagnetic frequency of nature, it just um, transmits that into me and it clears out my energetic field. So grounding, for example, right? So you put your feet on the ground, bare feet on the ground and the, the plus and the minus charge, it's just an electromagnetic field that clears out all of that toxic energy. And within that electromagnetic field is a being that transmits um, energy and words and understandings and enlightenment. And that to me is what the earth is. And you can find that anywhere. And when I'm in bed or when I'm with a client or when I'm at an art gallery or whether I'm in a supermarket, I am with that being all the time because I, I'm on I'm on its frequency. I'm on its pl- It is it. Like I'm living on a being. Mm-hmm. And I'm living in in love with that. Yeah. So I don't look at the weather and say, um, stop raining, right? I'll I'll tune in and I'll just say, if you could just hold off for a moment, I if you could just do that. Like you ride into the wave with the weather. It's not about controlling or conquering or knowing, it's just about becoming that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So in that way. The earth is not just another being. You become the earth, right? You can, yeah, when you're here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's powerful stuff. We are the earth. Yep, we are, but we are also, so, you know, in the Bible it says, and you'll return to dust. I never liked that sentence. It's like, it just means, and you're just an ant. Mm. in the spectrum of of everything well to me i thought they they love to tell us how insignificant we are however uh the thing is the earth is a being and i i was walking up a mountain one day and as i was coming down this mountain and my work is helping people find their purpose what's my purpose why am i here right and after doing hundreds and hundreds of these sessions i'm thinking what's actually my purpose like really Mm -hmm. you know what actually give me one that makes sense not that sounds good or is interesting, but makes sense to my heart. And and I was I was and the earth, I just felt this overwhelming love. And I really believe it was to come here to appreciate the being of the earth as it transcends through this time that we're all in. Yeah. Just to love to love it, not to fix it or mm-hmm. figure it out, just to love it. Just to be here and say you're just magnificent. Thank you're just you magnificent. That. Yeah. Do you feel as though that's everyone's purpose in one way or the other is to appreciate the earth and this life all together? And then that once we do start to love Mother Gaia, there is some kind of subtle transmission that does give us our humanly purpose here, you know, our humanly work or humanly job. But it starts with just a simple appreciation of our home, you know, our greater sense of self. You think that's where it all starts, where we get our purpose is just loving this life for all that it is or isn't, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I absolutely know what you mean. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And when you, the way that you described it, it seems like the earth to me, and this is how I also feel, it's like a, uh, it's like an enormous radio transmitter, you know? some kind of enormous electromagnetic radio transmitter that functions and uh, transmits its message through intuition through us. Because we're also transmitters. We're we're just like the mini receivers, though, on the larger transmitter of the Earth. And once we do tap into that, we there is somehow, some way, some kind of subtle, intuitive message or messages that come in to our life and we can tap in in many different ways through meditation going out in nature some yoga maybe some plant medicine but it's real there's something going on with the earth and once you do start to appreciate the energy of the earth it starts to appreciate you (laughs) it starts to work with you it's very strange it's real it sounds like some crazy hippie talk but Yes, the proof is in the pudding. Once you really do these modalities and these practices, uh, it becomes quite apparent in one's life and leads one down um, just a path of least resistance, it seems, like a path of 
at least inertia, you know, there is some kind of subtle guidance. You can call it God. I like to say, you know, I like to use God more and more so, but it's, it's a little more than the dogmatic wording of God, you know, the universe, Mother Gaia, like I said, your higher self, you could even say, but it's there. I mean, once you tap in, I don't know, there's no going back, you know, there's <laughs> no going back. Once you know you have earth on your side, it's like, what else do you need? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like a mm, exactly it's powerful it's like a superpower um yeah it is a superpower and it's so simple that too yeah so you simple it's it. always there right it's underneath there. our feet right there <laughs> and even 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 when we're in our homes and you don't get to go out or in your own work the air that i breathe is the being of that that's so true yeah you can't you escape know? it it's not about being barefoot, even though that's magnificent. And it does actually, um, sorry, there's something really strange flying across the sky. Uh oh, you just Beautiful. wouldn't know. You just wouldn't know. <laughs> They're coming in right I mean, now. It, is, it, it is 2024, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're right on time. <laughs> Imagine that they come down during a podcast. I hope that happens. Get it on tape. <laughs> Who knows? You never know. You never know. And um, it's <laughs> but they're also but part of the earth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're just part of creation. I mean, it, it. it doesn't. It doesn't have to. The human, the human, needs. It needs language to comprehend things, to understand things. But actually, what we're talking about, there is no language for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's it's an unspoken language, and it's it's the language of your heart. It's the language mm -hmm. of knowing. It's called intuition. It's called. It's just your intuition and. Um, like, look at how animals know what's happening. Do you ever see the, 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 the my cat knows in there before I'm coming home, it waits outside. Mm. You know, that's standard stuff for animals. Mm -hmm. They just, they're just so in tune and they haven't got, they didn't go to school, you see. They didn't mm -hmm. go to college. They didn't get the things that we <laughs> all got. You know, they didn't, mm -hmm. they're, you know, they are drinking the same water, mind you, but they're very, very intuitive and, um, I know that my greatest peace comes from closing my eyes and just saying hello. And I'm home. I'm really home within myself, deeply settled within myself, no matter where I am, no matter who I'm with. I just have to close my eyes and go, there you are. <laughs> and yeah. then, and then that union comes. Yes, union, yoga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That union comes. So true. It's available for all of us, just like this. All you got to do is close your eyes and maybe take a few deep breaths. And you'll mm -hmm. feel it. It's very true. <sighs> Where did this all come from for you? You know, how'd you get on this wavelength? Was there um, a moment, few moments or something that happened that allowed you to uh, make that connection to be able to take in that transmission because I feel as though that's the hardest part in this journey on this path is knowing that there is a path knowing that we can tap in um, so how'd you get the message I did have an experience when I was very young and um, but I also just want to say I completely agree with you it has to be experiential mm -hmm. I can read about this all day long. I can yeah. listen to Puck, but I need to have an experience of that. Yeah. So, so, so here's the thing, right? We're all mediums. A medium is not what, what you hear on TV or, you know, are told in religion. A medium is, medium is, it, it's, it's like this, right? It's like you're a bridge between this realm and that realm. Yeah, you can yeah. transmute and trans, you can understand. You can talk to relatives, you can talk to angels, God, you can talk to whatever you want to. Yeah. I can, I can close my eyes and think about my ex husband. I know exactly what he's thinking. Wow. That's scary. Yeah. Yeah. I must know from another, <laughs> you know, God love him. He's all right. We love each other deeply. <laughs> but a medium is somebody who has the ability to tune into different dimensions, let's say. Yeah. For want of a better word, dimension, realms, timelines realities this side the other side the veil we have the ability to just because it's all here it's like a kaleidoscope right do you know remember years ago you'd have a kaleidoscope and it was mm -hmm. just beautiful and i really think 
we spend our whole lives when we go on a quest to to know our own truth and we're looking we're looking through different lenses and we're trying to see which one suits us but in actual fact we're all of it and the truth for today may not sustain me for tomorrow my my soul and whatever this unspoken majesty is it just gives me what i need and any day when i'm open enough and clear enough to tune into that it's always there the answers are always there but when i was eight it was about six or seven or eight um something started talking to me in in the room oh. yeah i was i was having a really difficult situation that day it was a very dramatic um scene in in physical scene there's a lot going on and um i was very distressed very 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 sad i remember i'll never forget how sad i was it was just so sad you know and i remember i was looking out the window and i just saw it was over i really just thought everything was over because this overwhelming doomsday feeling came upon me and i'd never felt like that before and then suddenly something just started calling my name biba biba needs you to listen to me and i was like it was not in my head right it was like my granny or someone calling me hey come on your dinner's ready it was like you know mm -hmm. and it started talking to me about life and because i grew up in ireland and with my granny who go to church i just presumed it was god mm -hmm. god talking to me actually and it was god talking to me and and as i've gotten on my own journey i understand that it, you know it it's my higher self it's my soul communicating with me through all of just that consciousness we were talking about it doesn't have to be god or angels or et's or even my higher self it just is isness itself it loves me and it guides me and it's it's put me on this path since i was really really young and it was never easy right mm -hmm. it was never life was never easy i think we all know that right mm -hmm. you have to just be thrown off the cliff at least a dozen times and then you're thrown off and then you throw yourself off and then you're like hold on let's just give this another go we'll try and get another perspective and this voice um started talking to me outside of myself audibly and then it started talking to me inside and i could tell the difference between my voice and its voice because it always had a higher wisdom a higher uh, something i didn't know yeah. you know um, and i always knew when people were lying to me because it would say they're lying to you wow That's and they don't powerful. mean they don't mean it. They don't mean to be lying to you. Uh, so it wasn't like, watch out. It, or they would say, you got to leave this house now, or you've got to call this person now. It's constantly giving me information. And and over the decades, I now know that that's, I just have to close my eyes and go, what do you think? And it will say, I'll just say, are you there? And it will say, well, I'm always here. It's still there. Mm. Oh, it's just, it's not like there. It's just here yeah it's like myself <laughs> yeah right yeah. yeah 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 i don't know it's a phenomenon but it's beautiful guidance right is it just really come down to some kind of higher guidance yeah yeah i feel that yeah. too and definitely you experience that through a literal i mean you say it yourself but you're getting like actual english messages from this from your not messages like dialogues conversations with god wow conversation yeah it's a book <laughs> yeah it actually is and i could have <laughs> written a book about it and actually read that book and i thought that's it that's exactly it it's just conversations with god and i was a christian for years and buddhism and i got into all different things so god is a funny word because it's just like it's just like means different things to different people right like everything does means something yeah. different but i'm beginning to understand that you know i'll be really honest with you i've i've been deeply in love with god my whole life like deeply 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 because of my relationship it's 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 real to me as my relationship with my daughter i have more mm -hmm. conversations with god than i would have with my daughter mm -hmm. who lives with me who i raise by myself so it's like just very very real i've had i see orbs it's always something is and not that i need to see but i always know or doors will open or it's just always obvious to me and i just know i know things 
Yeah. You know, and uh-huh. I, I just think that I'm aware of it where some people aren't aware of it, but I think it's just there for all of us. But I just happen to be aware of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm not gifted. I'm not special. I'm not talented. I'm none of those things. I'm mm-hmm. just, I am very curious is one thing personally I am. And yeah. I'm very open-minded. Yeah. And therefore, it's become available to me. So that's the big difference is that you're, we're not, we all have this Mm -hmm. ability to tap in. But the big difference is that you have, or we have surrendered to God. And then in that surrender is the availability of God's guidance. You just got to make that decision, right? To, I mean, is it a decision you would say? That you made one day? Well, well, here's the thing, right? So let's just put God here for a moment because there's a lot of people who don't want to hear that. Yeah. Okay. And that's totally cool. Okay. But there's a lot of people who do want to hear that because that's their reality. We all live in different realities. So if I say the word God, what, who now, and you're going, oh, it's just mm. like, oh. So what I would say to that person is this. I am talking about your soul. Your soul wants to communicate with you. But but here's the problem. You are your number one. You don't believe the messages because it's my own voice. I could be making it up Um, or 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 is it real? It's this very, very analytical. um, It's like people who don't really um, believe that there's spacecraft lying around. It's not a matter of believing. There just are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There just are. I don't Come believe on. I have a daughter. She just is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe. So so with the God thing is this. I had to realize I I for the last five or six years, I would just say, I love you so much. Like I am. It's like a love I don't I have never experienced on the earth. It's just yeah. this like divine love. Like people with NDEs, for example. I studied them for two or three years, right? I studied them. I studied where they went and the conversations. I've had two or three years of meeting Yeshua every day, every single day. Um, And it's very, very real to me. And I've been in some really dark places for very long periods of time. I don't know, maybe I took way too many drugs when I was younger (laughs) or through my own traumas. You know, I don't know why, but um, it was depressing. I found myself very depressed because I'm an empath. Well, growing up in a harsh environment, so you're just susceptible to all that stuff, right? And I didn't, but I wasn't, didn't know why I was depressed. I was like, why am I so sad all the time? It was so sad. And and I met Yeshua and he would show me things and he would show up as like Jesus. It was just this, this being who said, oh, my name's Yeshua. And, you know, you're, my granny told me when I was eight, she says, if you want any help, you got to talk to Jesus. So I was like, who's Jesus? And she goes, well, he's like the son of God. I was like, okay. So I just started closing my eyes and he would show up, proper show up. And then I would go on these adventures and I would be taken to these places. And as I got older and I started studying NDEs, I've been to all those locations. I'm thinking, that's wild. To me, that was really normal. Why would you have to have an NDE to close your eyes and be taken? And then I, and then I spent two or three years getting to know the Holy Spirit. What is that? Well, that's the spirit that lives through all things. That's the fabric of life itself. That's the oneness, the one consciousness, the whole. And then now I'm like at a point where I'm going, I'd say to God, I love you so much. And I just cry with gratitude, right? For just the love in my heart. I just feel so much love and compassion for people. It's moving, you know, it's just like, I just see past all of the bullshit, all the programs, all of the defects it's like i just see the essence and it's just like it's magnificent and he'd say no i want you to give that to yourself i want you to tell yourself how much you love and appreciate yourself because it's in that that you'll find me Hmm. you don't go outside of yourself and give thanks anymore you got to stop that you got to stop thinking of me and think of what your own soul so he's been training me into that yeah. Then I came across this material, which was hard for me, by the way, because I want to talk to somebody because I've been talking to someone my whole life. Yeah. 
like, no, go quiet. I'm like, I don't want to go quiet. I want someone's hold, hand, hold my hand. Yeah. Mm. I want someone to pray to, to talk to, to laugh with, to cry at, to give out to when I'm pissed off. Like, hey, you, yeah. what the f- is going on? Mm. You know, like, I like having a rant as well. And it's very mm. real relationship. And the, the more angry I get, the better the results, by the way, I found. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. The more, <laughs> the more real and angry I would be when I was younger, I'd say I'm done with you. I'm just done, double done. Forget, don't even contact me. And then the next day, everything will be sorted. I mean, everything. Hmm. And I was like, wow. But I never used that as a tactic. I just thought, wow, someone really listening to me. Hmm. But then I took, it taken me two years to kind of go, okay, I'm not going to think about God or any of those things. I'm just going to think about my own soul, my soul, my own light, whatever, right? And it's been really, really interesting to drop all of your understanding that you've had your whole life, right? Drop it all and think, okay, what does my soul want me to know? And so I have this thing that I'm doing now and it's really, it's really fun. So if I have believed in God my whole life or believed in something, let's say, right? Really blind faith, totally blind as in anything's possible. And I've always believed that. Um, and I would put it to the test for 20 years. I would go out and do healings with people. Not because I'm a healer. I'm not a healer. I was just like, come on, Holy Spirit. You say you can heal people. Well, let's go. Let's say people need help. There's a lot of sick people. So I go out on the streets for days praying with people. Then I kind of thought, no, I don't want to do that anymore because people don't want to be healed. They don't want to be well. Mm-hmm. And then years later, now I do work where if they want something, they go, hey, can you help me with this? I can help you see that you can do it yourself. It's changed now, right? Consciousness has changed. It's all, mm. it's all about you healing yourself. And I'll, I'll hold that space with you. And I'll believe in that with you for you to do that yourself because it is you creating your own reality. It's you bringing everything into your reality, all the sicknesses, all the healing. It comes from in here. And you got to bring your wellness out. You got to bring your truth out. Because if you keep digesting everything that's not true to you and everything that doesn't serve you, it will make you sick Mm -hmm. because it's not your frequency. You're living on somebody else's timeline. You're living in somebody else's reality. You're not living. You're living in somebody else's version of of what you are. And it's like the radio is static. You can't find your own signal. But when you learn to go in and, and go into the reservoir of your own soul, Man, that's when that um, that emergence comes and you don't need to, to start. You're just not interested in truths anymore because you are the truth. Wow. I am the, I am the truth. Yeah. Right. Am, for my, for truth. myself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now that I've said it to you, he, that's what Yeshua said, right? I am the truth. I am the way. I am the light. Uh, mm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That's powerful stuff, Ela. Um, yeah, that so, dude, he knew. He knew what he was saying. Oh, yeah. Jesus knew, right? <laughs> he knew what he was saying. That's for sure. <laughs> a little bit ahead of his time, to say the least. <laughs> um, yeah, this is good stuff. So it's almost like the transformation that happened in you was uh, some kind of, I was going to say reliance. I don't know if that's the right word, but a, I'll say it. Reliance on the outward idea of God, the guidance from always tapping into God as this like, helper the sort of guidance yeah. from the outside in a way not really the outside but you know something that you didn't think you were a part of maybe and now it seems to be more integrated as like you are you are the way you are part of the same way mm-hmm. that yeshua is and mm-hmm. that's the big transformation i think all of us are going to make in our making at this point right now is we're finding out that we are um all a piece of the puzzle here we're all part of this one soul of god and we do still have that seeming outward guidance from some other source somewhere but it's really not somewhere else it's really within us it's hard to explain you know i think we said this before it's quite hard to put into words but it's like you become that outward source in a way it's like you morph into the way you morph into the holy spirit is an embodiment through gary and biba and the listener 
and then from there yeah it just uh that's when the magic starts <laughs> that's when that's when the ride gets really interesting and you become the ride that's the thing as well um mm -hmm. yeah this is good stuff uh this is really good stuff so exactly that sounds all fine and dandy, right? Now, let's say somebody's really interested in, in, in what we're talking about. Where do we start on this? Like, what do you have a recommendation of modalities or practices? Definitely. Listen. From, yeah, what do you say? I, what I say is this, right? Everything that you, you need is within you. And so it's not about getting a crowbar to take it out, okay? It's not, not like... like I haven't done ayahuasca and I, I wouldn't um, be for or against it, right? It is just is what it is. It's like meditation. I'm not for or against. It just is another modality. Mm -hmm. It's not one is better than the other. It's just what is being put before you and how you know something is being put before you because it just keeps popping up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right? So if I'm talking to you today about something and then tomorrow someone's is, it's like, oh, yeah, we just spoke about that or, you know, um, one time I was walking down the road and I saw a man morph into a lion's face. I've oh. seen like, yeah, it was, it was the most strange thing I've ever seen. I saw a man and his face turned into lions. He was a lion being. Now I'd never been aware of lion beings before, right? Like lion beings. Now I know there are Lyria and there are lion beings now because I've done my homework, right? So I went, I went home and I, all my chemistry in my body had changed because he locked, he clocked. I saw him. I've seen things morph before, but not a lion being. Mm. I've seen, I've seen people's faces change into male and female, right? But this was different. This was a lion. And when I saw him, he, he looked at me. And when his eyes locked into my eyes, all of my body changed. And it was like that for three days, right? It was like, but here's what I mean by, knowing something's in your path. Then I went home and I was like, lion beans. Nothing was really coming up that. It wasn't really making sense to me. It wasn't really, I was like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. So the next day I'm on YouTube and and there's a a man pops up and he says, there's a, there's a race of lion, be lion beings on the earth and they're healers, they're here to heal. Mm. And they, they, can, they morph from people to lions. Now I'd never come across it in my life. But the universe, something was bringing my, that to my awareness. So I knew that I had to pay attention to that. And, and here's another thing. You got to believe, right? Yeah. You got to just believe. Like I was a lady the other day. She rang me up and she just lost her husband. And she said, would you come and talk to me? I was like, okay. So I called up to her house. And it's not something I do often, but she was an unusual woman. She rang me and she goes, You're, we, we got to stick together, people like us. This is, this place is bad. We're all going through such a hard time. She was kind of quirky. So I said, well, she sounds cool. So I called up anyway. And she, as she was talking, her husband was saying to me, do you see, do, do you see why I love her so much? And I'm thinking, does he want me to say that? That's what he's just said to me. Right. And I, but so the humans like, you're just making this up, but I know I'm not. There's something in the mind that will always say you're making it up. Always. Uh, yeah. Okay. But then I said to her, I just heard your husband tell me that he just loves you so much. He wants me to know why he loves you so much. Because you're you're just beautiful. The way you walk, the way you move, the way you talk is just beautiful. And it was just perfect. And I thought, had I not listened, if I, I might not even listen to that voice, but I'm open, you see, because I'm I'm I've created space through years of meditation to hear, to be open, to feel and sense and see. I've created that space. The noise still goes on, but it's not like in my face. It's just there somewhere. It's just, mm -hmm. something, it's, it's like not, yeah. I'm not hypnotized by it all anymore. And, mm -hmm. um, you have to believe. So for me, what helped me do that was I did some spiritual, um, studies and psychic, like remote viewing, training to do remote viewing, training to do mediumship, channeling, not to be anything or not to have those things, just to learn to trust myself. Yeah. I just did a two-year mentorship on a trance program, and trance is about 
really going very, very deep, surrendering completely and just allowing, um, not trance to bring anything in, actually trance to bring myself out. Mm. My, so my soul's talking. Well, normally you can do that in hypnosis, right? With spiritual hypnosis. But I'm like, no, I want to do that without having to get hypnotized. I want to access to myself. Yeah. It's a fair enough request, isn't it? Mm. I want to be sovereign, mm -hmm. just sovereign as a as a human, but as a soul. Yeah. I want access to myself, all as all all the multidimensional aspects of myself. I want I want access to them. I don't want to be in the forgetter veils forever. No, I, I'm calling this out now. It's not I'm saying I'm not saying can I have access. I'm saying I want it now. Mm -hmm. I'm I want it. So if I keep asking, I'm not a schoolgirl anymore. You see, I'm not a it's not I'm not talking to God like he's my parents or a government or a teacher. It's like I am equal with that. I am not God. I've no interest in being God. Well, no, thanks. There's enough gods in this world and they're creating mayhem. I'm just me. I'm just a creator being doing my own thing. And I I'm calling in all aspects of myself to be present now. And that's very empowering. And when you do that, and you have to trust that, well, will God get pissed off? No, you won't get pissed off, trust me. Because if something loves you as much as this being loves you, it's for you. It's not against you, no matter what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's for you. It's for. So um, it's about believing in yourself, believing in your own abilities, believing that there's more than what you're seeing with your eyes or feeling. You've got to learn to feel more. How are you feeling when you have that conversation with that person? Forget about what they're saying with their words. You don't listen to the words. Listen to the feeling of the conversation. And when you start feeling your way through life, it becomes very obvious that what we're seeing is not so. Yeah. Mm. Well said. Damn. Yeah. Believing, mm -hmm. <laughs> believing, <stuff>. right? <sighs> yeah, that's uh, that's when Neo realized he was the one. He's starting to believe. <laughs> it's a famous scene in the Matrix. What's he doing? Morpheus said, "He's starting to believe." And then that's when, that's when he became Neo. And that's what we got to do. We have to believe that there's way more than meets the eye here. And then truly, yeah, life becomes magic. I think I already said that. So. You would say it starts with maybe just by stopping, slowing down a little bit. And almost with a childlike sense of curiosity, believing, right? Just or, yeah, maybe not even just believing, just being curious, just being open, I think. Open-mindedness, mm -hmm. true open-mindedness to the mystery of the moment. I feel as though that's where it starts. This is true. We do live in a magical world. That's the thing, too, is when I feel like when you get on this path and you start to do all of these modalities, you really get into it. Start to see that this world is it's wild. The truth is truly stranger than fiction. We live in some kind of science fiction reality that's a cross between Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Star Trek, The mm -hmm. Matrix, all put together. And it's, it's real. But if you're so tied to Fox News and TikTok and what this person said about you yesterday or five years ago and how I got to look a certain way and you're just caught in the BS, you're not going to be able to feel the magic. You know, it's not going to be there. It's not going to be present. It's a very surface level, dense living that many of us are caught in. A very, very just um, shallow paradigm, a shallow way of living that it seems. Um, but yeah, I think we already explained this. It's so simple to be able to tap into the magic. It's apparent for all of us. It's right here, right now, right beneath our feet. Just starts with a certain simple breath in and then yeah. you can start to feel it, you know, it's really there. And I think that's the yeah. important thing about what you said. It's like, you start to feel it. There's, there is that intuitive sense. And I think we have touched upon this intuition starts to come about some kind of knowing that goes beyond knowing of the mind as in the mind of um the classical rationale logical mind 
something that is like there's still the mind and i think you said this there's still there there's still mm -hmm. the thoughts but it doesn't really call the shots anymore it's not mm -hmm. the uh it's not the master and commander there i feel as though once you do tap into the higher self the master and commander the captain of the ship becomes the higher self of god and that leads the way throughout all of our endeavors in life and that's really where it becomes magical because you can see the magic and you can feel the guidance in all of the darkness all of our suffering there's a sort of transcendence that comes from it you know in the intuitive guidance and in the intuitive way of living there is some kind of um i don't know just some kind of transcendence and in intuitive living and in feeling what this means you know past the past the apparent phenomenal just uh how something appears at a surface level there's in that transcendent intuitive living you can probably attest to this is just the magic just appears um am i making sense here or am i just going off on like, no no on no, no 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 because you're 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 in it you're yeah. in it you're describing to me what's you're 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 giving me your internal dialogue of what's happening to you as you tune into what what you are which mm. is man you know these bodies just it's almost like a cage you know but but it's not because the body the body for here's the thing Here's, here's a very important thing to know. You must love your body. Mm. Okay? You must. So here's an analogy, right? So if you, you're into studying um, spacecrafts and interdimensional beings and all those kind of things, you'll understand that there are the spacecrafts don't have dials. They don't have gear sticks or yeah. they're That's not – they don't Zarr have – said. They don't have an operating system like when we get into people are going to say, well, how does she even know that? Because your intuition, when you tune in and you know, you just know when you hear something, it's real because it's it's there's no edges. It's a harmonic frequency that it's just the harmonics of it are perfect. Mm. And with these spacecrafts and in my own visions, I've been in these spacecrafts in my own experiences or visions, whatever they're called. They're not dreams. There's no such thing as a dream. Mm -hmm. You know, as in like it's it's dreaming is not real. Like this conversation is a dream, if you, if you wanted to even say that. Mm. So when I go to bed at night, is that a dream? Well, that's just language. Don't worry about language. Just know that you're having multiple experiences all the time. And just because one is pleasant and one is unpleasant or one is esoteric or one is logical doesn't mean one is real and one is, isn't real. It's all happening now. It's all very real. And and with the spacecrafts, they don't have dials. So the spacecraft is its own consciousness and the consciousness is tuned into the consciousness of the driver. So if, I, if I'm an interdimensional being and I have my own spaceship, UFO, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that UFO knows me and knows what I what my intention is. So the door will open and I'll go in and we'll just go. I don't have to tell it where to go. It's in my consciousness, like Avatar when she links into the the tail of that horse. Mm. She's not like take a right. It's just tuned into her. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are are the same, and I've studied this for years as well, right? So um, your body is waiting for your information. So when you have a thought, it becomes a thing. So if I think I'm sick, my body's thinking I'm sick. So the body gets sick. You know, if you're a hypochondriac and you're always thinking I have a headache, it must be a tumor, which is a lot of us do because of the societies we're brought up in, right? But you have to worry about everything. But you must love your body because if I don't love, say if I didn't like my legs for whatever reason, because they don't look like Kim Kardashian's legs. Right. Let's just say mm -hmm. if I haven't locked into that version of reality whereby you'll never be enough. So you may as well slate yourself. Now, you please don't go down that road because when when you reject a part of your body, it rejects you. Mm. It's going to mirror you. OK, and it will shut down. And this body, this avatar is the only reason why I'm on the earth. 
I have an avatar, I have a body, and I have to love it and respect it and nurture it. I have to, because this body is is the radio that's tuning in the frequency. So, you know, like a radio has a body. I can't find 91 FM if I don't have a radio. I need a radio. I need this body to get this job done yeah. while I'm here on earth. So you got to love your body because the body the body is a, a sentient being in its own right. It just wants to be loved. It's here to serve you. It's like a dog. It's just like, what can I do for you now? It brings you everywhere you need. It's really important that you have a relationship with your body. And it's not like looking in the body in the mirror and going, I love you. It's not It's not about that. It's about closing your eyes and saying, what do, I, what do you need? What's happening? Like in the hypnosis that I do, we do body scans. And the, in the body scan, the, the soul will always say what's wrong with the body. But if you, you got to go into the liver or there's an energy blockage in, in the hip here, or there's this, or there's a trauma in the foot, let's just say, mm. for whatever reason, we can do that ourselves. You just got to learn to connect. People are not connected with their bodies because they were raped or abused or beaten or hurt. Yeah. It's just like, no, I'm going to sedate this thing. It's, it's You must learn to harmonize the body and the energy of the body and the mind then goes into this beautiful dance of synchronicity where the mind and the body are in harmony and and then you just have harmony then you're home within yourself mm. you got to feel a home in this place otherwise you're not going to want to be here yeah, yeah that's right. the point you're not going to want to be here you're going to be depressed or addicted or whatever pornography addiction anything to escape i mean anything to escape but you can't escape what you are because you're always going to need another line of coke. You're always going to need an, another uh, more hardcore pornography or another drink or another relationship. Or if there's always going to be an unsatisfied, unmet need. Come home into yourself. Get to love your body. And loving your body just means, like, I, I knocked my head twice today, right? I was spring cleaning my house. So I just said, I'm really sorry. I didn't pay attention to what I was doing. I didn't mean to bang you like that. So I'm talking to my head as a, its own consciousness. Instead of what well, it's only my head, I'm like, I'm so sorry, you know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to do that. Mm. And and I'm never sick ever. Mm -hmm. Never. Why would I get sick? I, I can't get sick. <laughs> and if you did, you'd probably use it as like a message, right? Well, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, exactly. But I, I every day I'll sit with myself for thirty minutes and I'll close my eyes and I'll see what shows up. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to sit for 30 minutes every day. I want to go and do something else, but I'll sit because I need to know what's what's pending. What do I need to know? Is there mm -hmm. something that my soul needs to tell me? Is there something my body needs to tell me? And it's all good. And then I go about my day and it's all good. Mm -hmm. I've got to make time for myself. Make time for yourself. Love your, love your, love yourself as in love your soul, like value who you are and what you are and begin to believe in yourself and begin to believe in your intuition. So when someone says something to you and it doesn't feel right, don't doubt yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Don't doubt that. Like if you're with your partner or if you're with somebody or if you're in work and there's energies and feelings and you're Pay attention to how you're feeling. doesn't mean you have to go and say anything to them. Tune into how you're feeling in different environments and start to monitor how you are responding to life because you can then start having a better experience because you're always going to be told this is a good thing to do or maybe you should be kinder to that person because when you talk to them like that, it's just a bit too harsh. You don't know what they've been through and you go, Okay, I've got to soften the blow with them. I get it. I get it. Just tune in. And life just becomes very, very beautiful. Amen to that. Yeah. Right. Well, that's how I see this whole thing is about is once we tune in, we start to respond differently to the seeming outward world. And then that different response not only affects the other person, affects you most importantly and how you decide to respond to the outward world because we have all the power to do so truly we have the power to dictate how we feel at all times truly always no matter what happens we do have the ability that internal compass 
that leads the way always to feel at home, truly feel at home, no matter what happens seeming to us. No, it's actually everything happens for us. That's the big switch for us to come back home into the sanctuary of uh, peace, no matter what. Everything almost becomes the message, you know, <laughs> almost everything for me at a certain point, it can seem a little like sometimes too much, but it's kind of the truth. Everything is a message, a reminder to come back home. Everything serves as a remembrance. And when you get caught, like, ah, you know, you get angry or you get pissed off at somebody because you think they did something to you. Like, nope, that's just the message that you still got some work to do, <laughs> you know, or whatever it is, you know, uh, like you said, you hit your head, you could have got mad at yourself, you could have got mad at the situation, like, oh, damn, like, what is, you know, mad at that inanimate object that you hit your head on and caused more suffering. But instead, you chose to almost forgive, right? You chose to surrender to the pain in a way and forgive. And, you know, would you say you said sorry to your head or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so sorry. It's all about the changing of response. That's really, and it comes in many different ways and shapes and sizes and how it all comes about in the karma of our life. But I feel as though what the spiritual path alludes to is tuning in. And then from that changing of the dial, we change up how this instrument of the body, this medium of the body responds and then that response truly creates naturally, just naturally, just somehow naturally through that connection is a just natural conducive response to the moment. And it all has to do with surrender, really. It's all just like surrender. Just when you think you got it figured out, there's always going to be something where you hit your head, somebody calls you a name or something. There's always going to be something. But no matter what point of the story is, it's, everything is for you. And I'm pretty sure anybody that's listened this long has heard that. We've all heard that, right? You know, life starts to happen or stops happening to you and starts happening for you. I'm pretty sure that's a cliche, but that really is the truth. Everything, every single thing. And it seems unfathomable, right? To even think it's true, but it is. Everything from when you wake up in the morning to when you go to sleep, and even when you're asleep in your dreams, is for us to come back home and find the kingdom of heaven within. It's here right now. Jesus said it. It's here right now. But it seems like uh, it's all good in theory. Yet, we have work to do. For some reason, we can talk about it now, right, Biba? Like, yeah, kingdom of heaven is within. Peace is here and now. Be in the moment. Be here now, as they say. It's all happening for us. Yeah, I, I get caught, you know? And I think a lot of us are guilty of it. I get caught in the, the comings and goings of life, the narratives, the endless narratives, the stuff that happens. It gets me, you know? Sometimes all you got to do is just tune into the news and like you get sucked into that narrative or get sucked into a TikTok or something, just stupid stuff. I don't know. I guess uh, that's the work. That's the that's the the adventure of being a human is uh, slowly but surely, and maybe not so slowly as we think, refining ourselves to come back home to uh, be in the dwelling place of God. You know, slowly losing our sense of self with a lowercase s and coming back into the sense of self with an uppercase s. Every day that goes by, just when you think you got it. Mm -mm. Something will come in there. It's almost like becomes, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost comical. That's how I see it sometimes, you know, like when you're taking yourself a little too seriously, and I mean yourself with the lowercase s a little too seriously, God will throw me a joke. God will just, you know, he'll play a joke on me. Sometimes it could be a little dark. Sometimes it can be a little dark, you know? Sometimes the humor is, is dark, but the humor is in there. The joke is in there. If you know how to look at it with a keen eye. But for me, it's comical. I, I think it's different for everybody else how it appears. But for me, it seems like I'm like, what? I'm like, where are the cameras? Like, it seems like I'm being punked sometimes, you know? Yeah. Yeah.
Well, um, but no matter what, if I can, if you can look at it in the right way, you'll be able to be able to get the punchline. <laughs> Hope that made sense. But everything is for us, no matter what, no matter what. If that's really the point of the story. Everything really is truly happening for us. Uh, it's just up to us to be able to see it or not. Slow down and don't get caught in the mix. Don't get caught in the setup of the joke, you know? <laughs> don't get just caught in the setup. Make sure you can see the whole thing to get to the punchline and then uh, it'll make a little more sense. You can start to laugh. And on that note, do you think, you, you know, you start to take, there's a little bit lighter heartedness to life, you know? There's a little bit more of a comical play, you know? There's a little bit more of uh, taking it, less serious altogether would you say that comes about on this path yeah i do there's a few things you said that there are really i, know I said important. a lot sorry <laughs> no it's, it's really good but but answering that question like i when i when i close my eyes and i'm thinking right you know some serious things like what will i do in my business and i've got to do this what i shut it down do i have to move house so i've got all these things and then i'm thinking and then what happens is it's almost like that just goes down and then i become spirit right it's just mm -hmm. da, 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 da. and then and then that's the good thing about when you close your eyes it's not about meditating it's just about being giving yourself some space to be with yourself it's a divine appointment with yourself or with god or whatever your angels whatever your whatever your reality is right um, honor your own reality um, and really know what your own reality is and don't don't listen and don't try to fit into somebody else's keyhole because you are your own unique coding and you're your own unique um, light force. You have to really honor who you are. Mm -hmm. And when I when I sit with myself and I just. And then suddenly there's that, oh, I'm spirit. I came here to have an adventure. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking about vats or rents or kids or I'm thinking, oh, this is so much lighter. This is so much more interesting. It's like nothing in the earth matters anymore. Yeah. I just become that free soul. And it's thinking, well, what do I want to do today? Yeah, I just want to experience peace for this day. I just want to experience peace. Yeah, and and depending on my day, let's just say, if I'm working with someone, it's like I want to I'll connect with their soul before I meet someone. I'll say I call in their soul. I'll connect with them energetically on a soul level to feel them. So I'll know when I'm sitting with the human, it's like ah, I get I get you. I can see you already because I've been in the realm with you before we sat down. But for myself, um, it's having an appointment with myself every day just to to remember that I'm not a human being. And um, I'm I'm here in a human body, but I'm not a human being as such. I'm more than that. And um, you talked about the work, doing the work and it not coming easy and it's always changing. Yeah, it's it's like molecules that's as with info, without as above, so below. We're constantly moving and shaping and shifting. So today's reality is going to be very different to tomorrow's reality. Become pliable, become, mm. become lucid, become... Forget about everything that you believe in. Be willing to let it go and believe in something else because it may come back around again, you know, because when I was like a born again Christian for a few years, like quite a fundamentalist born again. Right. And it was just part of my journey. And then I got into this ET thing. I couldn't put the two together. They just were blending at all. And I was thinking, but where does where do they fit into God? Because my world was I was looking through the lens of God. I was like, they don't fit into God. So I had to go through all these loops. Two years later, I come back to God and I'll say, okay, so you created them too. You know, like that didn't come easy for me to digest because in being a born again, there has to be, not, that's just not real. Yeah. It's, not that they, it's not that they're not real. It's like, where do they come from? Because them and me don't come from the same place. But yeah. now I know it to be quite different. Mm -hmm. So, So the thing is, the work is the surrender, right? But you must know what you're surrendering to because you have faith, you see. You believe in something. So you can surrender into that. And I remember when I was young and um, I said to someone like, why don't you just like hand it over to God? Like when it gets too much for me, I just say, I'm done. I just can't figure this out, actually. This one's too big for me. So I give it all to you and you go and figure it out. Yeah, like Santa Claus for grown-ups. Literally, it's like you figure it out and 
deliver it to me when it's sorted. Uh-huh. But I would never question that. She said, B, but not everyone has faith. Mm. Not everybody has a natural. So for somebody who doesn't have a faith like that, right, like you, let's say, surrender to your soul. You didn't just, you didn't come here by accident. And you're more than a body. You're more than a mind. Your pure consciousness. So your soul came into this earth, like study Dolores Cannon's work, right? Dolores Cannon, who created quantum healing hypnosis, which is what I do. She explains it so beautifully. It's 50 years of research. It's 20 books. If you want to really get into some information, get into Dolores Cannon because it's really solid information because she's been studying for 50 years Mm. through hypnosis, through people's subconscious minds talking to the soul, right? And so when you surrender, know that your soul is is an intelligent being. It's a multidimensional intelligent being. Surrender to that, okay? And and for me, 2024 is, I went out with my daughter the other night, she said, what's your, she told me her, insurmountable list of things that she's going to achieve in 2024. So she said, well, what's yours? And I said, well, for all my life, I've made things happen. I've gone after things. I'm very passionate. I'm very driven. I'm very focused. I'm very inquisitive. I've got this inquisitive mind, man. It just can take in like you. It just can just go out and out and out and out and out and take in to the point where my brain is on fire because I'm taking in so much information. Mm -hmm. But now I'm now I'm letting it all go, all of it all of the effort, all of the searching, all of the seeking, because I know I already am that. Everything I need is within me. I figured that out. I just figured it out. It just was so obvious to me one day. I was like, you don't become enlightened. You're already enlightened. You don't have, you don't, you're already self-realized. You just got to know that you are that. It's like a trick. It's like a little trick. It's like cat in the hat. It's like, it's just already is. It's not like I pray to angels. I was with the lady the other day, channels angels. And I was like, angels aren't out here. Mm. Don't call them in. They're already there. It's mm-hmm. all in the here. And surrender to surrender to the intelligence and the divine beauty of your own soul. And allow that for a moment to deliver to you the life it wants to show you. Instead of like um freaking out and saying, I have to make this happen and I have to fix this relationship and I have to make that amount of money. Take a moment to just give it some space and let it deliver to you, attract to you what it is you really need to experience at this time and trust that. Yeah. And that's the work. It's trusting that, whether mm-hmm. that's your soul, whether that's God, you got to trust or there's something other than your intellect. Mm. Because here's what here's 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 how I know this really works like this. In hypnosis, you're dealing with the subconscious mind. So when your soul decides to come into the earth, to into a body, all of the experiences that your soul has had, they get downloaded into your subconscious mind, right? All of the experiences. And so here let's just say for a moment, here's your mind. So the conscious mind is the tiny, tiny, like a rice grain. It's a tiny part of the whole thing. And there's 95% of your subconscious mind that we have no access to, but is actually running the show. Right? Yeah. So science will say that. We're only using a tiny portion of our brains because in the subconscious mind is all the memories of the soul. Now, what if you're very intuitive, if you really, really learn to trust and just, what the heck, just believe it to be real. Just, mm. just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going until it keeps proving to you that you're never wrong. You always know what's right. You always know what's true. You always know what's good. You always know the right thing to say. You always know how somebody else is feeling. You always know you shouldn't have eaten 10 cookies, only one, because your mm-hmm. stomach. Went down. We have access to all of all of that if we just start believing. And the more you open your mind, the more access you have to all of your memories as a soul and where you've been before you came here. And when people do quantum healing and they come out of the session, they'll go, was that real? Now they could have. I can't explain to you what happens in those sessions. It's it's it, it's incredible. It's the reason why I do it. Is I'm blown away every time I do a session. I'm like, it's just, mm. it's just magical, right? But the most fascinating thing is the mind just goes, "Was that real?" 
Now, I warn them before they work that that's what's going to happen because the mind, the tiny part of the mind that we're using that gets in the car, that brushes the teeth, that rings the girlfriend, that knows what you want to eat, that's living in a 5% box. And that mind thinks that nothing else exists except for the 5% of its reality. So everything outside of the 5% can't be real. But the other 95% knows everything. But the 5%, the mind, the analytical mind, it only understands 5%. So you've got to say, okay, I'm not going to dissect this. I'm not going to bury this truth. I'm going to just let my mind not doesn't have to figure it out. It doesn't have to know. Just trust and surrender to something, something mystical, something magical. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't have to know what it is, but mm-hmm. to feel it. Yeah. So just know that the mind will try to slate anything spiritual. Yeah. It's going to it's going to want to do that because it doesn't get it. It's not its job. Mm. Why do, why do they give you a mantra when you meditate? Because the, the 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 mind needs something to do. It's like a dog. Are we going for a walk? Are we going for a walk? Are we going for a walk? When are we going for a walk? Yeah. Give it a bone. So you got to give it a bone. And so when we go on these quantum healing journeys, when we go and meditate, whatever we're doing, our spiritual work, get into your breathing because the mind has it needs a job. If you don't give it a job, it's going to really f up your experience because it's going to say it's not real. Yeah. And you and you've been conditioned through schools and societies not to believe in your higher self. Yeah. You just got to believe what the government says. Believe what your parents say. Believe believe what the church says. No, you got to believe what your soul is trying to tell you. Hmm. Yeah, that's the tricky Isn't part. It? Yeah, yeah. Is that that's, um, that's the work? Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. extricating ourselves from that five percent. That's the paradigm that the world is run upon. Is that five percent the mind? And there's really so much more going on. There's really so much more. And yeah, and just, it's beautiful. Yeah, and we're caught in this like little, it's it's an illusion. It's a thin veil, but still, it's this little aperture, right? It's got to let mm-hmm. the light in. But the whole, yeah. yeah, we've been conditioned our whole life to just be so confined in the small sense of self. But ultimately, it is an illusion. And that is the work is slowly opening up the aperture and coming into that 95%. It's real. It's real. It's real than real. <laughs> yeah. it's very very real and it's it's ever present and it's always trying to get your attention mm, always and the mind is very important people talk about the ego and the mind yeah i need the mind to to get everything done that i need that this avatar needs a mind because the mind is what gets it done however i'm not a mind i'm yeah. more than a body and i'm more than a mind my soul is in charge of the show not my mind that's taken me decades but I did it and it is possible. And it's much, it's possible to do that much quicker than I ever did it. Mm. You know, it's possible to just know it, just know it. You just mm. got to know that it's, it's just is so, but there is nothing for you to achieve. There's nothing for you to become. There's nothing for you to gain. You already are it. It already is so. Well, I don't believe that. That's the problem. That's your problem. Mm. You know why? Because you don't trust yourself. Figure out why you don't trust yourself. What is it you don't trust? Is it the voices in your head? Well, meditate and sit with those voices and ask them who they are. Who's saying those things? You know? Powerful Trust self. yourself. Yeah, you got to trust yourself. And just know that if you're making a podcast, why are you making a podcast? Is it because you're genuinely interested in talking to people? You want to raise awareness, raise consciousness? Or are you looking for something to say that I do this. Question your motives. And not that any of those are right or wrong. Why do you want to do healing? Is it because you think you're a healer or do you actually want to see people get well? Like I question everything that I do. Like Mm. I scrutinize myself because something will always try to slip in to to get in the way of my awakening, right? Even when I started my own podcast, it was like, well, why am I doing that? Like, why am I really doing that? Mm -hmm. And then I realized it was not my idea in the first place. It was my Mm -hmm. soul's idea. I was like, I didn't even really want to do a podcast because I've got loads to be doing already. And I thought, right, okay. So I've got to just trust I'm being divinely led. And when I paint, I paint. Am I painting because this looks nice or because I'm enjoying painting it? Will people like this or do do I even want to paint that? 
like question what you're doing, get to know yourself without, without any judgment, by the way, you know, without any judgment, be really loving and say, right. Okay. Well, I'm doing this because I want to make more friends or because I want to be seen to be cool. Okay. Well, why do you want to be cool? Are you not acceptable to yourself just as you are? And if you're not, why not? Why not? You know? I know. And there's so much help out there. You either yeah. got to close your eyes and ask your guides, say, I need help. Or you go to an energy worker or you go and do ayahuasca or you go and do something that's in your field of awareness that resonates with you. You There is so much help out there. Yeah. That's the thing. The time that we're in could be looked at as bleak, dark, tumultuous. Oh, very bleak and dark and tumultuous. <laughs> mm. But yet there's a silver lining in all of yes. that, in, all, in the mix. We have so much at our disposal to be yeah. able to transcend that, see beyond that. There's so many, there's so much guidance, whether it's in the form of books, podcasts, previous ascended masters, people like you, good art. This is so much. There's so much. You become There's your own so much. guru. Yeah. I credit the internet and utilizing the internet to the vast majority of my path, way more than just doing the podcast with people, even though that was huge, but way more than that. Just having that at my disposal, being able to like just tap into really whatever I want to tap into. If I am curious, you know, if I go into some kind, something with uh, a curious mind, some, I want to dive into whatever it is. I don't know. Some kind of path that's in yoga. I just look it up. It's just, it starts with a simple Google search. We still are <laughs> in the point right now where we have the freedom to do so. You know, mm -hmm. we, there's so much power. There's so much power, but with great power comes great responsibility because the, the same technology one can wreck themselves. So you just got to check yourself before you wreck yourself, a wise man once said. So you just got to know how to utilize the technology and the times that we're in for your greatest benefit rather than just getting lost in the craziness of the world. Yeah. It really is a wonderful time to be alive if you know how to look at it and know how to utilize the uh, just the things that are at our disposal to become, become a new and to, to mm -hmm. see yourself in a different light. You don't need any of it. That's the thing is you really don't need any of the books. You don't need a podcast. You don't need anybody or anything, truly, when it comes down to it. Um, but it's nice to have. There's, you know, sometimes we need guidance. Sometimes a lot of us need examples, you know, reminders for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful that we have that. But like I said, you really don't need it. When it comes down to it, you come to realize at a certain point after the seeking, I've come to realize like, oh, what was I trying to look for the whole time? Sometimes I do these podcasts. I'm like, what am I? Come on, man. I'm on episode 200 and something. Like, what am I <laughs> really trying to learn here? What am I trying to say or ask that I haven't said or asked before? And uh, I don't know. It just, these keep happening. I just keep going with the flow of enjoying. Cause I, the thing is, I truly enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. coming on here and speaking. I enjoy reading the books that I read and diving into certain quandaries that I dive into. So I would recommend to anybody listening is follow, follow what you like, man. And you got to know what you like, but follow really what you just resonate with. And I know, I don't know, it's different for everyone, what people resonate with, but there's a certain thing in me, intuition, which we talked about plenty that just guides the way in this. And I've been following that ever since. Just like follow really what you like and not necessarily what you like, the body likes, as in like your pleasures, you know, your desires, not that kind of like, what the soul likes. And once you realize what your soul likes or what your soul loves, that's all you need. That's all you need, man. You don't need anything else. So follow that like, mm, mm -hmm. it's just something that spark that just leads the way, man. Go with that. Go with what you love. And it's different for everyone. I love just connecting with people all over the world like you doing this. You love painting. I don't paint. I don't think I've ever painted anything in my life. But you just do it because you love it, right? You just love to well, sit down. I woke up on you. I had a vision and I knew how to paint. Yeah. See, that? I don't. that's not a thing for me. Some people, no, they love. No, it wasn't for me. I never painted in my life. So, so what ever. do you mean? 
So it was during COVID, right? I mm-hmm. was so bored of the doomsday narrative. The world was ending and everyone was going to die and all the us just crap information, oh, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like, as you said, the world is dark. Yeah, but the world is dark, but the polarity is it's also very light. Mm-hmm. So whatever you're tuning into is going to be your experiences, right? So if you mm-hmm. tune into the news, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Sure. Yeah. No, you, you made that choice. Mm-hmm. Stop it. Just stop tuning into the news. Yeah. Or cut down. Just plug into yourself because you are the news of today. The news is I'm mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. and I'm going to change my own reality. But I remember during COVID, I was so, I was getting a bit down. I was about a year and a half in proper lockdowns, 18 months. And I thought, I am, I'm the creator of my own reality. So what am I doing feeling like this in this reality? Mm-hmm. Like, let's put this to the test. I'm the creator of my own reality. So I want to experience joy in this place. Right joy and i didn't get any of those things and i was up against it and all that stuff and i was very quiet i'm not interested and i'm not for against anything it's just not my gig i don't need it i'm not going to get sick i just know that and i just don't need anything outside of myself um and so um i just went to bed and i said i want to experience joy in this place in a way that i've never experienced it before like i really wanted to exuberate through me right Not just like, yay, it's not a lockdown. I'm talking real joy. Like, I want to feel the energy running through my body, like life pumping through me, Mm. regardless of what the narrative is. And and I I went to bed, and in in my dream, I was in space, and I was on a planet painting another planet. And I remember this huge canvas, and it was thick. I just remember it was textured. It was like a – it was like this thick, textured – canvas with all these metallic colors and i woke up and i knew i could paint so i went to the art shop and i bought everything that i needed i knew exactly what i needed and i started painting and i never painted before so i asked that you shall receive right Mm, there it is there it is And, and i asked with a with an earnest heart i just said i just really come on i'm not living in this this reality anymore i'm done I'm done with that, actually. I'm Mm. so bored of it. I don't want to be at home anymore. Like, you know, can't open my business, can't do this. And I started painting and creating a new reality for myself. And when I did that, all my psychic abilities, like my real intuition, it it just went vump. It just, it went on to a whole new level where I could really understand people. Like, so when I sit with somebody now, when they come to see me for quantum healing or when I'm online, I can actually, I feel them, I go into them and I can feel where they're at and I help them navigate through that space. It just brought it, my empath abilities onto the other line, which is the nice version, not all everybody's sad feelings. I went straight into where everybody needs help mm-hmm. that comes to me. So it just... One thing leads to another, you know, so just start asking, I need help, help me, I want this, I want that, I want to experience better life, I want to experience joy, I want to know myself. Start asking those questions, not like, what do I do now? What if this happens? What if this happens? Stop with that and focus on, I want to experience this, I want this, I want to experience that, I want to know myself. When you start asking those questions, results will start showing up. Mm -hmm. Truly. (sighs) Ah. Well, hey, I think that's a good note to wrap this thing up at. We've talked plenty, but this seems like five minutes. Um, I think we've been talking <laughs> for like an hour and a half now. It's quite you're lovely to stuff. talk to, by the way. You're you're very well. nice to listen to listen to. Like when you talk, you have such a you're so beautifully articulate in how you how you um articulate your reality that I also understand because it's very similar to my own reality, my own experience of this life, how you, it's a very eloquent way you have of talking about that. I understand why you do the podcast. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, no, it's beautiful. You have a beautiful way of expressing the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes I feel like I'm just babbling on here. So it's good to get some good feedback. (laughs) Yeah, no, we like the babbling. It's really, your babbling is really important. Yeah, because your babbling is is tearing down uh, illusional programs of separation. Mm. Mm. Well, greatly appreciate that. I welcome your babbling as well. (laughs) (laughs) Well, 
Well, I'll get you on my podcast too, and we can have mm. a double whammy. Yeah, we yeah, do that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Brilliant. I think we just uh, just uh, touched the tip of the iceberg with where we could go. Um, I don't know where else to go from here, other than thanking you for coming on and sharing your time, effort, and wisdom. I really do appreciate it. I think this was a wonderful talk. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I wish you all the best. Keep on keeping on. And uh, thank you for anybody that listened this long as well. You're a real one. You're a real one, Biba. And anyone that listened this long is also a real one. So that's it. Yeah. I don't really have anything else to say. Do you have anything else you want to say? No, not at all. I'm I, I'm just uh, I'm grateful that you asked me to come on. And actually just isn't it what I love is like someone like you, someone on the other side of the earth can say, hey, do you fancy a chat? And here we yeah. are. <laughs> you know, that's 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 the beauty of what we're yeah. talking about right truly yeah yeah Wonderful we're instantly time. connected it's mm. beautiful and you just um proved that yeah you know what i've come to realize that doing this the proof is in the pudding of some kind of non-local quantum connection that comes about with people you know we're just talking to screens here we're just talking to lenses with microphones right like i'm not actually talking to you as in you're in the same room as me but yet mm -hmm. we are connected there is some kind of connection that is yeah. non-local through time and space where i'm tapping into the essence of biba right now it's quite interesting right because really all for all i know you're not real <laughs> you know I, i'm just saying it's kind of a joke mm -hmm. but all i'm getting is some kind of uh transcoded signal through my headphones and some pixels on a screen mm -hmm. but yet i know you're real like i know that you're a person but you're miles away you're across the atlantic ocean and mm -hmm. that to me is proof that we are connected on a mm -hmm. level way deeper than just you know the five senses there is some kind of really really deep connection that all human beings share with one another that is truly non-local yeah and, it's beautiful uh, yeah doing these things helps me realize that so i thank you for coming on here and aiding me in that in my sadhana as i like I mean, to call thank it you. and uh that's it peace until and love next to you. time until yeah, next time peace. peace and love to you too peace and love. take care bye See ya.